Okay, so let's start. Um, thank you for joining us today to learn how direct mailers, a Snowflake and H2O customer took advantage of using SQL to score data faster and more efficiently with H2O driverless AI. My name is Bruna Smith and I'm on the marketing team here at H2O.ai. And I'd love to start off by introducing our speaker, um, our first speaker of this webinar, Yves Laurent, who is our Director of Partnerships and Channels at H2O.ai. Before I hand it over to Yves, I'd like to share that we'll have some minutes for Q&A towards the end of the webinar. So please feel free to send us your questions throughout the session via the Q&A tab, not the chat, the chat tab um, on Zoom. And without further ado, I'd now like to hand it over to Yves. Welcome, Yves. Thank you, Bruna. And as Bruna mentioned, my name is uh, Yves Lawrence, and I'm responsible for partnerships here at H2O. And in this role, I've been working closely with Snowflake to help our customers accelerate the adoption of AI. I'm joined here on this webinar by Sean from Direct Mailers, and he'll share with us how Direct Mailers takes advantage of uh, the joint solution we've put in place with Snowflake. Uh, he'll cover how they transformed their business by using the deep integration uh, between H2O and Snowflake. And then we also have Mike Klusinski from uh, Snowflake uh, who joined us. Uh, Mike will cover why many customers use Snowflake as their data cloud for data science workloads. At the end of the webinar, we'll have some time for Q&A. And for that session, I also invited Eric Gudgeon to join us. Uh, he's the principal solution architect who implemented the integration of H2O with Snowflake. And so he'll be able to address the more technical questions uh, you may have. So let's dive right in here. For those of you who might be less familiar with uh, H2O.ai, I'd like to provide a quick introduction of our company. We're based in Silicon Valley, founded in 2012, with a focus on democratizing AI. Artificial intelligence and machine learning is getting uh, all the buzz these days. But to get to the transformative power that uh, AI can bring, it needs to be available and accessible to more people within companies. And to achieve that goal, H2O initially introduced open source machine learning software for enterprises who want to train machine learning models at scale on large data sets. And since we launched H2O Open Source, we have seen a huge adoption of our software in more than 20,000 organizations. This provided us with insights and key learnings on what customers are looking for when they embark on their AI journey. And that's how we developed our commercial software called Driverless AI. Building machine learning models is a very iterative and time-consuming process. Now with driverless AI, we help data scientists automate those repetitive and time-consuming tasks. Think of feature engineering, model tuning and stacking, documentation and so on. All of these tasks are being automated uh, within driverless. In short, it helps customers scale their data science efforts to create more and better models in less time. Our vision for the future is to continue on this journey to democratizing AI. With H2O Wave, which we just launched today, we provide customers with a low code development framework to build AI enabled applications. And with H2O AI Cloud, we bring all of our technology together to be easily consumed by customers in a hybrid cloud environment. Now this is all great, but technology for technology's sake is just meaningless. So at H2O, we really measure our success by how our customers get business value from the technology we provide. Customer success is the ultimate measure of success. And you can see here just a few of our customers across different industries, such as financial services, healthcare, consumer goods, and so on. Now let's talk about our partnership with Snowflake. 
We know that many customers want to build their technology stack based on best of breed software solutions. Going in with a single vendor approach leads to vendor lock-in. And I'm sure many of you remember the frustrations that come along with this. It compromises companies' flexibility in a world where innovation moves quickly. Snowflake provides a cloud-neutral data platform that runs on AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud Platform. And the same is true for H2O. We provide the best AI platform on any cloud. So it only made sense for us to bring Snowflake and H2O together with a tight integration so we can deliver the most seamless user experience for anybody who needs deeper insights from their, from their data. When we introduced driverless AI, we wanted to make it really easy for data scientists to use our platform. And in addition to using the Python or R client, we also provide a no-code point-and-click GUI. And that's what you see here on the left-hand side uh, of this slide. This is the driverless UI uh, user interface. Now, even though it makes it really easy to use driverless AI for training uh, ML models, the user still needs to learn a new technology platform. And so one of our goals with the integration of H2O with Snowflake was to bring our platform to the user in an environment that they already know and use on a regular basis. So they don't need to learn a new environment. Uh, Snowflake users can now train and deploy models using SQL statements inside Snowflake. And once the model is ready, it gets deployed on a REST server and it's ready to make predictions. Those predictions are made, again, using SQL commands inside Snowflake. So the user remains in a Snowflake environment and can manage the end-to-end -end machine learning process. Now, maintaining full visibility on models that are being built is really essential. And so that's why we made sure that every model that gets trained from the Snowflake environment is also visible inside driverless AI for tracking and review purposes. Now let's uh, see what challenges customers are facing when they deploy predictive uh, analytics and models. So shown here on the left hand side is typically a traditional environment that uh, users have deployed uh, to, uh, uh, to deploy machine learning models. Now to, to train a model first and foremost, you would use a connector to move data from Snowflake to driverless AI. You train the model using the driverless AI interface, after which you deploy the model in an operational environment. You know, let's say that could be a REST server. To make predictions, you now need to extract the data from Snowflake into uh, a CSV file, as an example. You then score the data uh, with predictions within your scoring engine. And then you need to write the results back into your Snowflake environment. All this is like a very tedious uh, and cumbersome process to set up and also to manage. Now, when Snowflake introduced external functions earlier this year, it provided uh, H2O with an opportunity to completely transform this process and the user experience. Uh, with external functions, you make driverless AI available to the Snowflake user as a remote service. This remote service can then be called using SQL statements inside Snowflake. Uh, that whole machine learning process of training and deploying models can now be done inside of Snowflake. And for the scoring of data, you no longer need to go through the process of exporting files uh, outside of Snowflake, uh, you just uh, stay within that Snowflake environment. And this provides a more flexible process that allows for just-in-time scoring rather than the batch scoring process that I just went through on the left-hand side of this slide. Now, Sean from Direct Mailers will share how they took advantage of, this, uh, of these capabilities and uh, the business impact it generated. Now, let me wrap up my section here by sharing the many use cases H2O has worked on 
with hundreds of customers across many verticals. These range from horizontal use cases, such as customer churn prediction uh, or forecasting models to more vertical specific use cases, such as fraud detection or debt scoring, for example. Now let me hand it over to Sean from Direct Mailer so he can share more details on how the H2O and Snowflake integration allowed him to transform his business. So with that being said, uh, over to you, Sean. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, really excited to talk about, um, you know, both our, our partnership and uh, with, with H2O and Snowflake and um, really how it's changed our business. Um, just as, a, as some background for us, uh, we were founded in 1989 um, with a unique proposition. Um, we originally started as a uh, direct mail company um, with the really pay for performance mantra. So um, unlike most everyone out there, we, we really front all the costs of, of marketing for our clients um, and then are compensated on um, performance. So not necessarily, you know, per response, but really how that, how that response or how that candidate uh, progresses through a conversion funnel, um, you know, whatever, whatever vertical that might be, whether it's in, you know, finance or uh, mortgage services, um, really, really, how does that lead perform? And, and if the lead doesn't perform, then, you know, it's, it's no worse off for our clients. So we've been doing that since 1989. Um, we started our relationship with H2O and Snowflake coincidentally in the same year, uh, back in 2016. Um, we've been a driverless AI customer since then, and really we've moved our entire data lake um, to Snowflake and have been um, nothing short but ecstatic on both, um, both our relationship with H2O and Snowflake. And really both um, technologies and both um, uh, you know, unique competencies have been really game changers for us. Um, but with the integration or with the advent of external functions and, um, you know, the H2O Snowflake integration that we're going to talk about today, taking those two platforms and connecting them really has, really has changed our business. And we're really excited about what it's done. Um, we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about this, but, but prior, to, um, prior to really this external function, this external function and the, the integration that we're talking about today, we really had to to bulk score all of our data up front. So the, the just-in-time scoring um, really has been a game changer in how we operate and how we make um, data available, how we democratize it, and really um, within the Snowflake data lake, um, how, we, how we tile that together to, um, to make it meaningful for, for us and our clients. Um, let me... So, Operationally, our, our challenges are beating the marketing, um, you know, services, pay for performance is really extract meaningful data um, from our data sets, whether it be uh, demographic, um, credit, um, external economic factors, whether it be, you know, the 10 year treasury uh, rate for that day, uh, what mortgage rates are. Um, it also might be um, intender based signals. So, you know, uh, streams of data coming in and, and some of these data sets and uh, features change daily, hourly. Um, some change much, much less often, you know, whether it be a, a monthly credit snapshot. So um, really the goal of the team is to turn um, these, what essentially add up to, you know, billions of cells of data into um, marketing decisions, what we wanna do. So not only, you know, do we wanna market to an individual, um, but really product specific propensity on um, if we market to an individual, what should we market? Um, what's going to yield the best ROI for us um, and our clients? Um, and really come up with models that predict not only response, but conversion metrics. Um, you know, for us, um, providing a lead to a client that, that doesn't convert is worse than really providing no lead at all. Um, and one of the challenges we have is, is really end-to-end um, -end, uh, processing time and performance. Um, one of the challenges is, as we're dealing with these large data sets, and um, you know, think of think of everyone in the country and credit and demographic, um, you know, non non identifiable information. Tie that all together, um, it becomes a daunting task to take those data sets and you know score that data against all of our models. Um, and the the amount of time it takes us to score that data is uh, really 
inversely related to um, profitability, right? Um, the longer it takes us to um, find the candidates we want to market, um, the more those candidates might have uh, shifted out of our out of our uh, prime pool, right? There's um, there's slippage there, I guess. So you know the the goal is really to score and decision as in as little time as possible. Um, especially this year, you know, back if we looked at March, uh, market conditions were changing uh, daily. You know, we saw interest rate swings um, like we've never seen before. And so as those, as those rates change, as people move in and out of, um, uh, you know, various, um, we'll call it silos or have flags that turn on and off for, for motion or propensity in certain things, they, they move in and out of our, our product eligibility and then also who we might want to market. So uh, just because someone is, is eligible and we want, might want to market to them on day zero, um, that, that signal and that data is going to change on day two, three, four. So if it's taking us uh, days to, to score and decision on that data, um, it's, it's too late at that point. You know, it's, um, your, your models and your decision is only as good as your, your source data. So, one of the challenges we had uh, this year and before we worked with with Eric and, and the team over at H2O was really how do we how do we reduce our um, decisioning time? You know, how do we take um, what is essentially uh, basically 50 models we, we really have in play from month to month? Um, there's about 500 on the shelf, but but once we we train and validate a model, we we tend to use it. Um, for in a for a long period of time, much like the legacy FICO models that you know determine credit worthiness, those are those are models that are tried and true and have been around for uh, you know years and years. So we we really have about 50 models in play, and we're scoring that against um, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 500 um, 500 million um, you know persons and and associative credit and demographic data with that and. And in tender signals. So really the goal is we were we were having a challenge where that ends up with about 25 billion decisions um, that we're having to, to front load. Um, and decisioning was taking too long for us. You know, having to having to score, you know, 25 billion um, decisions or scores is or magnitude more challenging than um, you know, five or ten million. So that was that was really the challenge we were, you know. We were having is how do we how do we reduce the the time it takes us to make a decision using our our H two O models with the data we have in Snowflake? How do we how do we those two platforms and reduce um, and really the the total end to end time on making those business decisions? And here you know if we look at what I would call like an old legacy state or or what it looked like you know before the Snowflake external function. Um, there it's, it's a painful process. You know, um, we had to essentially build a kind of an internal application layer to facilitate those, those 25 billion decisions. Um, you know, taking, taking data from Snowflake, um, unloading that onto an S3 share. Um, we had to build a platform to spin up and manage um, up of, you know, 50, 75, spot uh, ec2 instances at a time um, and there's there's challenges that come with that there you know spot instances are are cheap for a reason uh h2o or uh, uh, aws will, will take them from you um, but that was a that was a business decision we made just on on cost basis um, so we would have a, a management layer that would watch those instances would would configure the the instance hand off the scoring job um, would facilitate the scoring keep an eye on it um, you know, that was that process alone there, um, you know, step three, as far as scoring those 25 billion records, because we had to front load all that data. Um, that was that was a good uh, day or two. You know, um, some of our models are very complex and wide. Um, some models are 1600 uh, columns wide. Um, so, you know, those those take a, a little bit more to to score because of all the excellent you know feature engineering that that is built into the driverless platform and, and the models um, but after we you know after we'd score that data for the better part of 36 to 48 hours uh, we'd have to then bring that data back into uh, those scores back into an s3 share 
um, bring that back into our data lake and Snowflake, and then eventually really transform, you know, do, do, do tr some transformation and end up with our final data sets that we want a decision off of. So, you know, going from the raw attributes uh, and step one to step five was a couple day process, just, just on sheer scale, right? Um, just on having those, those 25 billion decisions. And then some, some models are actually uh, based upon the results of other models. So there's a, there's a chain and a, um, uh, an orchestration that has to be facilitated within that, that old legacy pipeline. Um, you know, there was, there's a number of, uh, competencies that that had to be developed in in this um, scoring pipeline, if you will. There's a number of uh, individuals that have to touch it. You know, you have uh, data engineers, uh, data sciences, um, programmers. Um, you know, individuals that are well versed in the AWS ecosystem. So there's there's a number of processes and um, steps that that had to be accomplished to really facilitate this kind of uh, end to end scoring. Um, you know, Eve, Eve spoke earlier about how it's, uh, um, I can't remember what, uh, what word he used, but, but the word painful comes to mind, um, just on the number of um, dependencies here in steps. Um, inevitably, there would, there would be things that would break, um, you know, things that needed to be updated. And it was very um, hands-on in order for us to, to score all this data. Um, the great thing is, um, you know, earlier this year, as Eva spoke spoke to uh, Snowflake, as as they always do, they they evolve and come out with new products um, and new feature sets within their product. Um, you know, being a customer for the last four years, it's it's amazing to see how that how the product has evolved and how you know Snowflake really takes in feedback from their their customers, their their actual users on, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could do you know X Y Z. Um, and how they really evolved that, that feature. And today, you know, we're able to use uh, what, what we internally call, um, and, and he spoke to it, you know, just-in-time scoring. So looking back at, for us, the, the legacy pipeline, the, the biggest challenge for us was how do we come up with those 25 billion decisions um, for us to then pull out of those candidates who we want to market to, um, because it's essentially, you know, our money on the line. Uh, as we work with our lender clients, we're fronting all those costs. So if, if we can't get, um, you know, qualified individuals that, that will convert, um, it's, it's our money that's going out the door. So the challenge for us was front loading all those decisions and then pulling the real winners out of them. Um, the challenge we were running into again was with front loading that much data, by the time you, you score all that data and make it available to your, um, you know, to the marketing team, um, that, that data is now stale and old, you know, uh, as interest rates change, as the market changes, you know, one of the big things is like, is net tangible benefits. So, um, if we kick off like a refresh right on Friday, um, by the time we come in Monday or Tuesday, um, things have changed. And so we were, we were having a problem with, with slippage there. Um, and this new just in time scoring really negates that. Um, one of the one of the great things with with the integration directly between Snowflake and our H two O uh, platform is we really reduce the need um, to to do that bulk scoring. Um, those those twenty five billion decisions are are simply out of out of the need that as we're going through our our kind of workflow orchestration, um, we need to pull the winners out. But for us. The time it would take to score smaller data sets was um, prohibitive. So with the advent of the external functions, the integration between H2O and Snowflake, we're able to score a much narrower data set. Um, that allows for, for fresher and more accurate decisioning um, because the data is not stale. You know, we're not working with data that that might be, you know, three, four days old. Um, we're able to include more recent um, um, insights and, and actions that we have on individuals. They might have moved into, um, you know, a data set where we believe they're intenders for certain products, right? We're able to, to add in those additional features and, and um, attributes into the decisions. And we're, we're looking at fresh data. We're not looking at data from, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, so that, that's, that was extre extremely beneficial to us. Um, 
one of the other benefits too is being able to tie all that scoring into our workflow automation um, using just simple, you know, SQL queries, right? You know, what, what we have here is, is really the result of, of this integration between H2O and Snowflake that negates um, six to seven processes, right? We're no longer um, unloading data to an S3 share. We're no longer spinning up EC2 instances, building those instances, loading models, uh, bringing those scores in, scoring the data, um, taking that data and, and loading it back into Snowflake. So the ability for, uh, you know, a SQL engineer or really our, our, or, you know, our workflow to, to score that data in real time, as opposed to having to step through the seven processes is, is um, really beneficial for our business. Um, one of the great things too is, you know, we're able to um, validate and look at new models faster. We're able to, you know, I guess I would say we're able to, uh, you know, win faster and fail faster just because the data is um, that much more accessible. Um, you know, for us, democratizing the data and making it so anyone that, that is in our, our data lake is able to make decisions and look at those results of decisions, as opposed to having to go through a tedious um, legacy pipeline for scoring data is extremely beneficial. Um, really, you know, lowering the, the bar of entry into meaningful insights into your data has proved um, really game changing with this, with this integration. So, you know, the, the, the just in time scoring has been extremely beneficial um, just in the um, I would say out you know there's there's uh, there's the time it saves us there's the money that it saves us but for us um, and our clients the ability to really reduce reduce that time is uh, you know 10x of, of the cost savings because the models perform much better um, you know, our models are only as good as the, the data we give them. And with bringing these two platforms, the Snowflake and H2O much closer together and reducing the friction between those two, um, we've seen much, much better, much better um, data going into the models and uh, a better, better result of that data coming out of the models. Um, we've, we've seen, um, you know, reduction in, in compute time, uh, performance has gone up. Um, efficiencies, both on, on AWS and Snowflake, um, we are consuming, uh, you know, much less resources. Uh, and, you know, along with that consumption of resources, there's cost savings there too. You know, if you look back, again, we're not, we're not having to, we didn't enjoy, you know, scoring 25 billion decisions up front, um, but uh, that was, that was, just out of necessity. So this this integration reduces that that scoring burden um, down to much you know much more manageable data sets. And so we've seen a real real efficiency improvement there. And then also the biggest uh, the biggest benefit to us again is really just the reduction in processing time. You know, uh, going back uh, when we first moved to Snowflake uh, back in uh, 2016, we were able to reduce our overall um, uh, you know, processing time and time it took us to uh, build out our data sets and our data lake. And now just a few years later, with the advent of these external functions, we're able to tie in, uh, you know, our H2O models and really see that that really makes that platform much more efficient as well. And it's great that not only can, you know, a user go into, um, you know, the driverless AI GUI and, and build models and score data, but we're able to much more efficiently plug that into, um, you know, our, our data lake, make those scores available, and really our our workflow automation within Snowflake as well, because it's, you know, as easy as calling a, a SQL statement. So that you know that last that last bit is really um, very important to us. So you know, I'd say with the integration of these two things, uh, I would. I guess I would bring it back around and say, for us, um, the reduction in time produces um, more signal and less noise. Um, you know, you're you're negating that that 36 hours to 48 hour processing time. Um, that that better that better data really is uh, higher scoring accuracy. Um, you know, I talk. I was talking to 
some folks here and really I said it's for us it's been as been as big of a game changer as uh, the analog I would say would be trying to predict in our business would be trying to predict fraud using um, four you know two three four day old transactions right you're you're behind the curve at that point. If you're, if you're using your data sets to predict fraud and, and you're looking at what happened four days ago, uh, the horse is kind of out of the barn. Um, so for us, being able to reduce that scoring um, ask and bring the data closer to our models, um, you know, we're, we're using real-time transactions to predict fraud, right? So that's, um, can't say enough you know, great things about how much that's really changed our business. Um, and then overall, you know, just the, the cost savings, both on, on AWS and with all of our compute hours um, has been extremely beneficial. So, um, you know, four years into the relationship, um, you know, Eric and team over there put, put together this, uh, you know, this product that uses uh, Snowflake's, um, you know, external functions and um, couldn't be happier. It's amazing to see, um, time after time, you know, both the H2O and Snowflake team really put together innovative products that that are beneficial to us and our customers um, and, you know, really keep, I guess, keep innovating. Um, it's it's amazing to see the progress on the platforms and, and just the new tools. So we're, couldn't say enough great things about this and we've been super happy with it. Um, and I think, uh, you know, Mike at, Mike at the Snowflake team, um, I'm going to hand it over to him and he can talk a little, little bit more of the specifics on, on what that uh, external function looks like and maybe make you, I guess, just bring the team up to speed on, on Snowflake. Great. Thanks, Sean. Um, let me share my screen. Go ahead and get started. All right, perfect. Well, as Sean said, uh, I'm Mike Klasinski, and I head up the data science uh, workload for Snowflake's product marketing. Now, before we get into the, the data science aspect, um, Eves and, and Sean also mentioned that Snowflake is the data cloud, so I just want to give a little bit of background on that. Um, so the data cloud really is a global network where thousands of organizations mobilize data with near unlimited scale, concurrency, and performance. Now, wherever data our users live, Snowflake delivers a single and seamless experience across multiple public clouds. So whether you're on AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud, Snowflake has the same consistent experience. Now, we created the data cloud to eliminate data silos, which is the primary reason why companies are falling short of realizing the potential of data. With the rise of the application clouds, your sales forces, your work days, uh, as well as your infrastructure clouds, such as AWS, Azure, and Google, the amount of data we have to drive our business has exploded. But that data is now spread across many different technologies and environments. To drive business value, companies in every industry have to gather data sourced from these different databases, these different business units, their suppliers, partners, and customers. Now, all these silos are expensive and time-consuming to extract value from, and governance and collaboration are nearly impossible across these silos. With the Snowflake Data Cloud, you can eliminate all of these silos. And the cl Data Cloud is made up of two things. It's made up of the technology, which is Snowflake's platform, as well as the data. So the actual content that you, our customers, are using to drive better decisions, improve your products and services, and drive better business outcomes. And every Snowflake customer has access to the Data Cloud by using Snowflake's platform. The data cloud enables three things, access and governance and action. Access means that organizations can discover and share data without physically moving it in its native structured or unstructured format at near unlimited scale. Governance means knowing and controlling your data in a way that can enable collaboration while maintaining the highest levels of security and compliance. And finally, action means that you can empower every part of your business with data to build better products, make faster decisions, create new revenue streams, and realize the value of that data through much higher data utilization. Snowflake's platform powers the data cloud by eliminating the complexity, cost, and constraints inherent with other approaches. Customers integrate a wide range of data sources, structured, semi-structured, and soon unstructured, and deliver it up for a wide range of uses. 
including ad hoc analytics, real-time reporting, data monetization, and machine learning. Snowflake eliminates architectural complexity, so you can run many workloads with the elasticity, performance, and scale required by the modern enterprise. Now, over the last several decades, companies have invested heavily in reporting, business intelligence, and visual analytics to empower more of their staff with access to data so that they could make better business decisions. Now, these analysts use historical measurements to better understand what happened in the past. Then they add in their knowledge of the business to try and explain why those things happen. They manually analyze the data to find patterns and use their intuition to explain why those patterns occurred. But for the most part, decisions are still made based on intuition, and the data is simply used to reinforce those ideas. Now, in many cases, the amount of data that is being looked at to make these decisions is just a fraction, maybe you know, 5 to 10% of the total data that organizations have access to. But in the last 10 years or so, companies have started to shift from just doing reporting and historical analysis to conducting data science using advanced mathematical models and machine and deep learning. So what has changed to make this possible? The primary technology that is driving this change is the cloud. Companies are now able to extensively collect and store more and more data, more measurements and more metrics than ever before. In fact, there's now so much data to analyze that human brains are unable to comprehend all of the variables and recognize the patterns and trends within that data. But the cloud has solved that problem as well by providing nearly unlimited amounts of powerful compute resources. Any company can now use their credit card to rent the equivalent of a supercomputer. So by using advanced math, computers can automatically recognize patterns and trends in the data. These patterns and trends can predict or forecast what will happen in the future. With access to all this data and powerful compute, leading companies can even take things a step further and not just predict what will happen, but they can actually increase the likelihood of those things happening. Now this is why data science is proving to be the biggest competitive advantage for companies. And the cloud has made this possible by making unlimited storage and compute resources accessible to every company. But driving business impact with analytics is still proving to be challenging. Most companies are only seeing a 10 to 20% return on their data science investments. And four out of five analytical insights still don't deliver business outcomes. Now with Snowflake, data scientists, data analysts, and business users are finally able to gain access to all the data they need without bottlenecks and without contention for resources. This allows organizations to gain significant efficiencies in the way they collect, organize, process, and consume data from a variety of sources in a variety of formats. With Snowflake's fast, elastic scaling, every user can have unlimited on-demand resources for every workload. With separation of compute from storage, every team has access to consistent data and the ability to provision additional virtual warehouse resources when necessary for unlimited user concurrency and no bottlenecks. And finally, Snowflake offers all of these capabilities with next to no management and no maintenance. By being offered as a service, your organization can simply focus on loading in data and querying it. Snowflake takes care of the rest automatically. The most powerful benefit of the data cloud is the broad partner ecosystem that enables our customers to use the best tools for the job, whether that's business intelligence, ETL, or machine learning. And at Snowflake, we're especially excited about our partnership with H2O. Our teams have worked closely for the last year to build unique integration options for our data scientists and data analysts. For those of you that attended Snowflake's recent Data Cloud Summit, you would have seen the keynote demo where we ran trained H2O models directly within Snowflake using Java UDFs and our new Snowpark interface. H2O has done a tremendous job to make models accessible to Snowflake seamlessly reducing the complexity and effort for data scientists and data engineers to build, train, and deploy models. In addition to being able to run trained H2O models natively within Snowflake using SQL, Java, or Scala, any user, including data analysts, can now use SQL from within Snowflake to call out to H2O to select, train, and deploy models, all without leaving Snowflake. We announced and demonstrated this external functions integration back in June, and it has had a tremendous impact for our joint customers, including as you heard from Sean at Direct Mailers. And our teams are especially excited for this upcoming year. With support for Python coming to Snowpark, 
everyone will soon be able to use H2O models even quicker with Snowflake. With that, Yves, back to you. Hey, thanks, uh, Mike, uh, and uh, thank you, Sean, as well. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we do have more details about the joint solution between Snowflake and H2O uh, that is available uh, both on the Snowflake website. If you go to the Partners section, you go to Technology Partners, you will see uh, H2O there with uh, a landing page with some more details. Um, we also have a Snowflake landing page on the H2O website that you can explore for more details about uh, the joint value prop. Uh, with that being said, I want to open up to uh, q and A. I I know that Bruna uh, has closely monitored the questions coming in. Um, so over to you, Bruna. Yes. So let me take a look at some of the questions that we've received. Um, can both H203 and driverless AI models be used with this integration? Brilliant. This is um, this is Eric. So yes, you can actually use any of our models from H two O or driverless into uh, through this integration. Okay, thank you. And you can turn your videos on if you want for the Q and A. Another question that uh, came up uh, was related to. Um, uh, the overall setup to make the integration work with uh, external functions, uh, what it takes. So Eric, I'm not sure if uh, you can explain a little bit more about the setup uh, of this integration. Yeah, certainly. So the integration is a, um, uh, you know, is a REST endpoint as, uh, as was discussed earlier. And it takes about um, it takes about ninety minutes to set up. There's some pieces that we do on the H two O side, some pieces we do um, in Snowflake, and then of course uh, to enable everything being secure, there's some pieces that would enable in AWS or Azure, whatever cloud provider you're using, to ensure that the path between both products is completely secure. Er, um, do you mind if I? Let me jump in there too. And uh, one of the benefits that we found too, once you know, once the platform and the integration is built between um, Snowflake and H2O and, and the data flow is facilitated, um, one of the great things with the integration is how, um, how easy it is to um, add in additional models. So going back to the, the first question there, the ability to just drop in um, you know, a, uh, an additional job object from a new model um, makes, makes the integration super easy to scale and um, add an additional you know, models. Just want to throw that out there. Okay, we're, we're getting some questions here in the Q&A. Um, do you, so Gu, Paras Gupta is asking if, if you currently have H2O embedded into Snowflake for model training as well as the scoring of the new data, and how often is the H2O model retrained? So I could probably take that one. Um, so we, as I, as I mentioned, um, in November in our data cloud summit, in our keynote, we demonstrated how you can take a trained H2O model in a packaged dot uh, mojo file and then run that using Snowpark um, on Snowflake infrastructure um, using Java UDFs. Now that is not currently publicly available. Uh, we'll, we're excited to roll that out um, in 2021. So that'll go through a whole, you know, private, public, and then general availability process. But what that essentially allows you to do is set up, um, you know, kind of an MLOps or a CICD pipeline where you can build and train these models uh, in H2O and then extract those mojo files and then, you know, bring those in and instantiate those directly within Snowflake and run those. Um, and, and that'll help both with batch scoring as well as what Sean was showing with kind of this on-demand thing, right? You write a SQL statement, um, it immediately instantiates that Java UDF, does the scoring of the data, does the inference, uh, and then turns off. Uh, so you get the benefits of, you know, being able to do that on-demand, but also from an efficiency and cost perspective, you're only utilizing resources when that model's running and scoring. Uh, and when it's done, it turns off. It's a similar model to what you're used to with, with using Snowflake virtual warehouses. Hey, thanks, Mike. 
I got another question here related to uh, performance uh, of uh, the scoring using Exxon function. Uh, what does the performance look like, especially if you have massive amount of data that needs to be scored using external functions, if we can share any uh, additional uh, data uh, details uh, on that. And I know, Eric, uh, you, you have done quite extensive performance testing, so why don't I hand that over to you? Uh, yeah, that's right. So we put a lot of work into how the, um, the REST endpoint would scale. Um, as everyone probably knows, Snowflake is really great at scaling its workloads um, by itself based on you know, the, the queries that are happening. And so what we did is we did something very similar so that we could scale as Snowflake scaled to send us uh, rows to be scored um, you know, on, a, on a very small um, you know, C4 instance. Um, you know, we will easily do over 55,000 uh, predictions a second. Um, and so we've seen customers with, you know, very large amounts of data to score, um, you know, seeing similar throughput. And because of the nature of the models being stateless, we can scale across many machines too. And so we can even get, um, uh, you know, to the, you know, to millions of rows um, if needed just by scaling across machines. Thank you. Thanks, There's another question related to the uh, competitive landscape and uh, uh, what does the integration look like of H2O uh, with other uh, platforms? And uh, let me take that one and, and then I'll uh, hand it over as well to either uh, Eric and Mike if they want to expand a little bit more on this. But uh, uh, obviously uh, H2O uh, can uh, connect to a wide variety of data sources. However, uh, the level of integration that we have shown here, being able uh, to train, deploy models from within a SQL environment like Snowflake is really unique, uh, a unique setup that we have with, uh, with Snowflake. And Mike just touched upon uh, what's coming uh, down the pike, right? Being able now to uh, deploy models with Java UDFs inside of Snowflake directly. Um, we believe there's use cases for both using external functions as well as Java UDFs, as well as Snowpark. Uh, we just wanna uh, adapt to what the users are doing and, and making sure we uh, uh, expand or reach. Um, so no matter who you are as a persona and what the environment is that you're using, we wanna, we wanna make it easy for you. And so the integration we have with Snowflake is definitely uh, a leading one. Uh, so that's a little bit what I wanted to say uh, in that regard. Uh, Mike and Eric, I'm not sure if there's anything else that you wanted to add on that. Yeah, I would just say that, you know, working with your team over the last six months to a year has, has been awesome. Uh, you guys have been super responsive. And I would say we've been able to to innovate with you um, very, very quickly. And obviously, we do have other machine learning partners. But um, I would say that the technology here and the amount of testing and the throughput we're able to get is is, is quite exemplary. So thanks, Mike. There's another question here. Um, is there any throttle limit for API calling external functions or is there any configuration that can speed up the real-time scoring? Um, yeah, so from a, from a throttling point of view, you know, there are some, uh, some settings that you can set optionally inside of um, AWS, so if you're using the AWS gateway to talk from Snowflake to the REST endpoint. Um, there's also some pieces in the configuration for, um, uh, for the REST endpoint and how many predictions it will do concurrently. And then, and then lastly, on the integration side, from the Snowflake um, side of the pipe, um, you can set things like uh, the max batch size um, for each request, which will um, which will limit how many are sent at one you know over one connection to the endpoint for scoring. So there's numerous ways to actually tune this to you know kind of achieve or to throttle um, whatever load you really need. Hey, thanks. I think, Bruno, do you have any other questions or are we ready to uh, wrap up the session? For Sean? 
Um, so was this quick to set up and integrate with your environment, the uh, integration? I would, I would say uh, Eric, Eric sandbagged it a little early when he said it took 90 minutes earlier. Um, I think it was closer to an hour, um, and I'm sure it's even faster now. Um, you know, one of the great things is, uh, I would say within 45 minutes, 45 minutes to an hour, um, we really had the integration up and running and data flowing between Snowflake and, um, you know, the H2O score and REST server. Um, and to Eric's point, you know, from that, out of the box, it was extremely performant, um, much faster than our current um, process that, that consumed um, H2O's uh, Python scoring pipeline. Um, but in that, Eric said, hey, uh, you know, can you shoot me some logs? And um, we, we pulled a little bit, bit of um, debug traces and, and sent some things over to him. And he said, I think I can, you know, squeeze a little more juice out of that, out of that orange. And so, um, you know, Eric and the team was great on, on really tuning that to the, the best it could be. Um, but the short answer is, um, you know, about 30, 45 minutes from, um, you know, starting and building out everything, both in, in AWS and Snowflake, we had, we had data um, going back and forth. Okay, so um, I don't think we have any other questions. So if you would like to share any final thoughts before we wrap up, feel free to do that. I would say thanks everybody for reaching out. I would encourage you to explore the solution. Um, if you already are in touch with your Snowflake rep or your H2O rep, uh, approach them and ask them more details. Uh, we're there to, uh, to support them uh, as well as you directly. And uh, looking forward to, uh, uh, to working with you if this uh, level of integration is of interest to you. Thank you so much. Um, we're getting some questions around uh, sharing the deck and the recording. You will get uh, the deck and the recording. So um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to our amazing speakers. Um, have a great, uh, great rest of your day. And thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you.